بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Dear brothers and sisters السلام عليكم ورحمة الله تعالى وبركاته وعليكم السلام ورحمة الله وبركاته Are there aliens in this universe? Actually, we ourselves are aliens in this world. We are not from Earth. We are now on Earth, yes, for some time. But initially, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala created Adam alayhi salam somewhere else, and He made him live in paradise for a certain time, and then He brought him into this world. So today we'll speak a little about the concept of space exploration, if you may, from the Islamic point of view. Uh, this coincides with the achievement of the UAE of sending someone to the ISS, the International Space Station. Now, uh, one strange incident happened with the Messenger Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We are not speaking about his own journey to the universe and to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in Al-Isra Al-Mi'raj. We are not speaking about what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala show Ibrahim alayhi salam from the realms and the kingdoms of Allah Almighty in the universe. Rather, we will speak about something that happened here on earth. The Lady Aisha, Sayyid Aisha radiallahu anha, the mother, is, the mother of the believers. May Allah Almighty be well pleased with her. Amen. She was asked, what was the strangest thing you saw from the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? She said one day, one day, he asked permission to spend the night in prayer. It means that this is different from the normal night prayer. It means the full night or somehow. So she said, by Allah Almighty, I love to be close to you. But at the same time, I love what pleases you and make you happy. The Messenger وسلم, performed wudu and started in the prayer and started reciting one verse from the Holy Quran and started crying until he wet his beard and the ground with tears. And he continued to recite and cry. Until Bilal came to him to tell him that it was the time for the Fajr prayer. So when Bilal came and saw the Messenger وسلم, crying, he says, Oh Messenger of Allah, are you crying why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has forgiven all your sins? Whatever in the past, whatever in the present or in the future, everything. The Messenger وسلم, said, Shall I not be a thankful servant? A verse from the Holy Quran was revealed to me this night. Woe until unto anyone who recites it and not think about it. Then he recited the verse, Verily in the creation of the heavens and earth, and the rotation of the day and night, there are signs for people of deep understanding. Then he continued to recite the verses. The Holy Quran is an open invitation to all humanity and especially to the believers to think about the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the heavens and in earth. Most of the verses are speaking about the creation of the heavens, not earth. Space exploration. Not earth exploration. Together they are mentioned a lot. Earth is mentioned sometimes. Space is mentioned a lot. In fact, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, verily the creation of the heavens and earth is bigger than the creation of human being. But most people don't know. This is a very complex creation. We don't know much about it. And the more we know about it, the more we understand that we know less. And this continues and this will continue until Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows when. Now the Holy Quran invites people to look and search and discover the creation. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Holy Quran, say, O Muhammad, to them, look and observe what is in the heavens and earth. 
Direct invitation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Say it to them, say it to people, to your followers, to humanity. And space exclusively, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says He Himself directly. Here He does not say to the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa say to them. Allah Almighty Himself is speaking to you. Will they not look to the sky above them, how we built it, and how we beautified it, and there are no cracks in it, it's a perfect creation. It's a perfect creation. Because if something goes wrong in the universe, the whole universe probably is going to collapse. This is something that is built together. It's one, as if it is one entity of a creation. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the other verse, and look and observe to the sky how it is held high above you. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us to search for how the creation started itself. Allah Almighty says in the Holy Quran, say, O Muhammad وسلم, to them, again, we're speaking about the earth, walk around on earth to observe how the creation started. How the creation, means the clue of how the creation started is found here on the earth, on earth. The clue to our, which creation we don't know, whether he speaks about the full creation or the creation of what is on earth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. But then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us about how the creation of the universe happened. In one place in the Holy Quran, Allah Almighty tells us that all of it was smoke-like. Small particles, smoke-like. Then Allah Almighty turned to the heavens while it was smoke-like. And he says to it, be what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants to shape it. And then in the other place, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the creation of the universe, the initial creation of the universe, on what is people are calling nowadays the Big Bang Theory, something. Allah Almighty speaks here in this verse to the disbelievers, not to the believers, not to humanity in general, exclusively to those who do not believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala or do not believe in the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam or do not believe in the Quran. Haven't the disbelievers observe how the heavens and earth were joined entity and we split them apart? And we made from water every living thing. Will they still not believe? SubhanAllah. If there was only this verse in the Holy Quran to prove that the Quran is from Allah Almighty and that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the creator and that the Messenger Muhammad wa ta'ala is the Messenger of Allah Almighty, it would be enough. Because he is speaking about the beginning of the creation of the whole universe and the creation of every living thing. Both of them are in agreement to what we nowadays know. Will they still not believe that this is from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not from the Messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks also in many verses about the current state of the universe. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, for example, says, and I swear by the heavens that is weaved together. SubhanAllah, this is a very strange word. All of these words, joined entity, split apart, mentioned once in the Holy Quran. Because sometimes nowadays the non-Muslims are claiming that these are ambiguous words found in the Holy Quran that can be understood in so many different things and it's just a coincidence. That is not a coincidence. Allah is speaking to the disbeliever directly, speaking about the beginning of the creation, speaking about the beginning of the creation of living things or the origin of creation, and then tell them, will they still not believe? And you say, this is ambiguous. Yeah, it's just, it might be. No. The word, these words are repeated how many times in the whole Quran? Ratqan, how many times repeated in the full Quran? Once only. Fataqnahuma, how many times in the full Quran? Once only. Wasamai datil hubuk, hubuk, how many times repeated in the full Quran? Weaved together the whole universe. Once only, and only in this place. I, I swear, the Creator subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying by the heavens that are weaved together. Nowadays they are speaking about the fabric of the universe that is, is so connected, well connected together. You can see about it. Go and say, we are not talking about stars being in cluster or universe uh, or galaxies like. The galaxies themselves are connected also together, subhanAllah. It's a huge 
creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. As Allah Almighty said, this is a bigger creation than most people know. Then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the piercing or bounding uh, star, a recent discovery. There is a verse named after it, subhanallah. At-Tariq, wa-Samai wa tariq wa ma-adraka ma-Tariq, an-Najmu al-Thaqib. So At-Tariq, how many times repeated in the Holy Quran? Only in this place, twice. Samai wa Tariq wa ma-adraka ma-Tariq, to explain it. Speaking about the only thing. An-Najmu al-Thaqib, al-Thaqib repeated how many times in the Holy Quran? Only once in the whole Quran. The piercing. Wa-Najmi idha hawa. When the star, I swear by the star, when it collapses unto itself. The death of stars, repeated only once in the Holy Quran. It's not ambiguous words that are so... No, this is repeated in one place. In most of them, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala swears by them. And I swear. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about uh, the expanding of the universe. And the heavens, we created it with the strengths. And we are its expanders. We are expanding it. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking about the expanding of the universe as we exist nowadays. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala spoke about the placement of the stars. He says, and I'm not going to swear by the placement of the star. And this is a great oath, if you know. It's a huge. But I'm not going to swear by it. But he says, the placement of the stars. Why not by the stars themselves? In other places, they were looking at the stars. Because what you are seeing nowadays was the place of the star before, not now. Where is it now? You don't know. It might not be there now. It might not be in existence. It could be dead one billion years ago and we do not know about it. Because its light is just reaching us now. So he says, the placements of the stars. Subhanallah. And he says, this is a huge oath if you only know. Nowadays we are understanding why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is speaking in this verse. Why? Why he says, I, and I swear by this placement of the star for the stop. He says, no. This is a huge thing, a big thing, but most people do not understand. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about the creation of the heavens and, and, and earth or the, 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 the bodies around us. He says, Kullum fi falaki yasbahoon. Each one of them is swimming in its orbit or in an orbit. In an orbit, of course. Great thing. Already automatic. But why does he say swim? 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 Are they swimming? Subhanallah. But the Holy Quran says swim. They swim. Subhanallah. We have two things here to point out. Scientific studies show that the model that is explaining what we know about the universe now, or current understanding of the universe, uh, they, are, they call it, if I, if I recall, they call it the uh, Lambada CDM, or something like that. So they're trying to explain the unobservable part of the space, because they say more than 95% of the universe does not exist or is missing rather we do not know about it 95 percent more than 95 percent they call it nowadays they call it the dark matter or the dark energy about three or four months back a new theory came to combine these two elements together in one theory and they are calling it if i recall correctly the dark fluid or the negative fluid they are calling it a fluid nowadays subhanallah fluid so <laughs> that is what is in between them what is holding them together the whole universe nowadays the scientists are calling it fluid just about exactly if i recall the the paper was published on december uh, 2018 subhanallah allah might be saying there and, and the holy quran says there is something in between them in the Holy Quran, for Allah Almighty speaks about the heavens, the creation of the heavens and earth, and what is in between them. It is not space, it is not empty. There is something you do not know about it. In the other verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying, verily Allah Almighty is holding the heavens and an earth in places, in their own places, relative places. And if it wasn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, if they will move from their places, who is able to hold them except Allah Almighty? You can't. 
Something is holding them. That is what they are trying to explain nowadays. So, the Holy Quran speaks about so many things about the current state of the universe for us to observe, to understand, and to realize that this is a creation from Allah Almighty. And this Quran is the book from the Creator Himself who knows about the secrets of the heavens and earth. Uh, the Holy Quran also speaks about what will happen. How will this universe end? And there are lots of verses speaking about them. We can take glimpses about some of them. Allah Almighty says that they will change. They will not remain the same. The day when the heavens and earth will be changed to a different thing. The earth, a different earth, and the heavens, a different heaven. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about when the sky is peeled off or ruled in the other places. Why the sama kushitat. How many times repeated in the Holy Quran? Again, once only. You can take most of whatever is linked to the scientific observation, usually mentioned only once in the Holy Quran. The whole world. Never used again. To realize that this is not a coincidence. This is meant by itself in this place, in this regard, subhanAllah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks, uh, say, يَوْمَ تَكُونُ السَّمَاءُ كَالْمُهْلِ When the heavens will be like murky oil or dark oil, subhanAllah. Turn into a different thing. يَوْمَ نَطْوِ السَّمَاءَ كَطَيِّ السِّجِلِّ لِلْكُتُبِ When we rule the heavens like the ruling of a record or book for record. You know the old book, they used to rule it like this? He says, as we, be, be, as we started the creation, we will end it, subhanAllah. The opposite. It was like that. We are. So he's telling you, this is, this is the end, so it means the opposite was the beginning. Interesting. And so on and so forth. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, فَإِذَا انشَقَّتِ السَّمَاءُ فَكَانَتْ وَرْدَةً كَدِّهَانَ How many times Warda is mentioned in the full Quran? Once only. كَدِّهَان, دِهَان, once only. And when the heavens is split and it becomes like a rose oily or with oily color or colored like a red rose with oil or rosy color like oil, all of it. You could go and look for something that is still in existence nowadays. This is probably what will happen to the full universe later on. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows best. Interestingly, one of them clearly resembles this ayah. They are calling it the cat's eye nipula. The cat's eye nipula. You could Google it. So it looks very beautiful. One of the most beautiful objects in the universe. It's a nipple. Okay? Now, read their description. They say they gave it a resemblance of a cat's eye, which was pretty good. And compare that to the description of Allah Almighty, he says, like a rose painted with oily colors. And try to check yourself, which one is closer? Which description fits it precisely? The description of Allah Almighty or the description of scientist? Allah Almighty mentions that this is what is going to happen to the Holy Spirit. When the planets scatter around, subhanAllah. And tetherat how many times? Once in the Holy Quran. You can take any one of them, usually, as we said before, and we are not going to repeat often and often again. Allah Almighty is calling us to think about the realms of creation of Allah Almighty in this universe. So Allah Almighty says, أَوَلَمْ يَنْظُرُوا فِي مَلَكُوتِ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ Haven't they observed the realms of the creation of the heavens and earth, or the realms of the heavens and earth? There is an order directly to do that as well. What does it mean to observe the realm of the creation of Allah Almighty? It means to know that they are created with the wisdom from Allah Almighty and the ability and the strength or strength and the perfection in that creation. Realize that this is a very complex creation. Need wisdom and ability and knowledge and power. Why do you do that? Allah Almighty mentioned the benefit when you do that. The benefit is first, you will realize and know more about the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. You know more about the Creator. And thus, you will increase your Iman in Allah Almighty. That increases your Iman in Allah Almighty. And thus, you will fear the punishment of Allah Almighty if you go against His will or His desire or what He wants, His, his command, if you will disobey Him. 
Allah Almighty re realized these steps in the place where he calls about the creation. The, ver the situation when the Messenger وسلم, said, the Almighty says they realize that Allah Almighty did not create any of that in vain. They say, glory be, O Allah Almighty, and praise be to you. You have not created all of that in vain. There is a wisdom behind the creation of this complex creation. Then in the end, they say, فَقِنَا عَذَابَ النَّارِ So save us from the torment of the fire. Do not punish us. We are such a little creation in the creation of Allah Almighty. If all the universe is going according to what Allah Almighty wants from it, only two creatures are disobeying Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The jinn and the people. That's it. So of course you fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty is controlling this whole thing. How can you go against the order of Allah Almighty? So that is why you fear the punishment. Now when a person studies more about this creation, he will reach what is called al yaqeen وَلِيَكُونَ مِنَ الْمُوْقِنِينَ When Allah Almighty spoke about Ibrahim السلام, and we showed Ibrahim the realms of the heavens and the earth so that he will be among those who have yaqeen. Yaqeen means complete faith based on complete knowledge or precise knowledge. No doubt about it. So that is means, because some people, sadly, some people believe in Allah Almighty or the world and the hereafter and so on only by imitating their forefathers or, and that's it. Without realizing for themselves so that they will have the strength of Iman. You need to do that. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, look, observe the creation so that you will have this yaqeen inshallah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us this yaqeen. Amen. There are many benefits of studying this. And I don't know if we have time. What was the time? You can tell us how... No, no, how, how long we have been speaking. I don't want to keep you for a long time. We are just about half the topic, so probably it's already too late for you. We will speak very, uh, very, yeah, already, yes, uh, we have topped the time. Very short thing. Now, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praised the people who study uh, astronomy. And he described them with six description in the Holy Quran. They are the people of understanding, people of Ulul Albab. We have spoken about the Ulul Albab before, the people who have uh, deep knowledge that guides them to make correct decisions uh, and wise decisions. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them the people of uh, knowledge and people of minds. These are three, and people of Ulul Albab. Allah might describe them as the Iman with Iman. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala describes them with Taqwa. In the other verse, لِقَوْمٍ يَتَّقُونَ And uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, uh, described them with people who turn back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Means this is an important field of study. Uh, Alhamdulillah, uh, the, uh, the Muslim uh, civilization started doing that early on. And that is why the Muslim civilization led the whole world in scientific discoveries and most of these discoveries were linked with astronomy. With astronomy. Most of the observable stars in the universe nowadays are, still have their Arabic names, still today. Till today. So worldwide they are used with the same Arabic names that the, 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 the Arabic astronomers put for them, till today. And these are in so many pages. You can go for tables, tables and tables of names, Arabic names for observable stars. Uh, final point is do not mix between astronomy and astrology. Now there is a problem with this or these two terms. Ology usually in the English language is used for good knowledge or practical knowledge or useful knowledge. <laughs> However, here, astrology is linked with the fake science uh, of so-called thinking that reading the signs and the stars and the places and so on, and based on that, predicting what will happen on earth to people or to their future or diseases or sickness or love and hate and so on. This is rubbish. Now let's mix them together. 
astronomy as a knowledge this is something that is very important in Islam as we have seen and this is, there is a direct order from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to the Muslims to follow that and study it and so on to realize the creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala however what happens here on earth or the life and, and death of people and so on has absolutely nothing to do with the stars that makes them so that is why the messenger وسلم, spoke about the people of astrology so anyone who takes part of astrology huh? of the start he has taken a branch of magic it will increase as much he will increase from that knowledge God forbid means he is away from Islam because magic is, is forbidden in Islam and it is one of the major sins in Islam so that is why the messenger وسلم, mentioned this and Islam rejects all the superstitions and, 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 and baseless uh, ideas and, and, and pseudoscience that some people might claim from astrology and that is why uh, some people might think that eclipse for example an eclipse happen of the sun or the moon they say that this happens because a very important person died or a very poor person was given birth both of that are baseless Subhanallah, it coincided that the death of Ibrahim السلام, the son of the messenger Muhammad وسلم, in the same day the sun eclipsed. So the people say, Subhanallah, the sun eclipsed because of the death of the son of the messenger Muhammad وسلم. Although the messenger وسلم, was very saddened with the death of his son, last son, youngest son, Ibrahim السلام, he was at the age of six months or so. Subhanallah. Still, the Messenger وسلم, gathered people, took to the pulpit, and told them, Verily, the sun and the moon are two signs from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They never eclipse for the death of a person or the birth of a person. They are creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. When it happens, pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala until it is over, and that's it. Don't link it with these baseless ideas. It's a huge creation from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, has lots of wisdoms, and they are moving precisely as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created them. So they should guide you to the Creator, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Almighty knows best.